Hey everybody, welcome to art class. We're gonna make some really fun stuff this week, just like we did last week and like we always do. But what we made last week, let's take a little look at it. This is, I gotta move my microphone. This is my picture that I made last week. That was a lot of fun. We learned about different fish and different things that live underwater and we made a picture about it. So it was a fun way to practice drawing and make something really cool, but also learn a little bit about the world around us. We learned about a sea cucumber. We learned about a sea anemone and a clownfish that lives in there. We learned about coral and seaweed and sea grapes. So it's really cool to learn about the different plants and animals in the world around us. So we're gonna do that again today. But instead of being an underwater scene, we are going to make a Minnesota forest scene. All right, so we live in Minnesota and there's lots of beautiful forests all around us. And it's really great to be able to go out. That's part of why I love Minnesota so much is because there's so many forests and we can just go out and go hiking and see all this beautiful stuff. So we're gonna learn about what's out there and we're gonna practice drawing some of that cool stuff too. Let's let me get my camera set up just right. This always takes me just a second to get it right. There we go, okay. And I'll zoom in on my paper a little bit. Okay, looks good. Okay, so I have a couple things pulled up here. Um, let's take a look. I pulled up some pictures of different trees that live in Minnesota. There's lots of them. We have some birds, lots of different kinds of birds in Minnesota, and we'll look at some of those. We got mammals. Look at all these choices that we have. And we've got frogs. Okay, so these are just some examples of animals that I thought we could look at to help us put together our scene. So if I think of a forest in Minnesota, the first thing I think of is maybe a little river or a lake because we got a lot of rivers or lakes. So I'm gonna put some water at the bottom. Now you can do it just like mine if you want or you can do it your own way. All right, I always think it's really good to come up with your own way to do stuff. You can get some ideas from me, but also come up with some of your own ideas. I'm gonna put this blue part at the bottom. That's gonna be my river. And maybe I'll color that in later. But right now I'm just kind of spacing everything out. Maybe I'll put some trees. And I'm gonna think about what kind of tree I wanna put. There's a lot of different kinds of trees here in Minnesota. Some of them kind of look the same. But, you know, we have Oh, I gotta put that screen up, there we go. We have these more of like pine kind of trees, right? These are like evergreen trees that stay green and they have needles instead of leaves. But we have other types of trees too with leaves. So I'm gonna start with an evergreen tree. Here's what I'll do for now. I'll put this down here. And I'm gonna make it real big. And they kind of have a triangular shape with kind of some spiky edges, right? See how I did that? Just getting the basic shape. And maybe I'll draw another one next to it, maybe a couple trees. I'm gonna do more details on this later. I'm just kind of putting everything, mapping out where things are gonna go. And then maybe I'll make a different kind of tree, like one of these trees down here. So. Let's try that. I will draw. I'm just gonna start in green. I'll color it later. I'm gonna draw the, uh, the trunk of the tree and then a big shape that kind of matches the shape that we see here for this tree. See, this tree has this kind of shape. It's almost like a circle, but it's a little bigger on the bottom. You see that? That's kind of the shape that I got. And if yours looks different, that's okay too. No problem. And I can look at a couple of these trees. I always like a willow tree. You see this tree? This is a willow tree. And those trees have long leaves that hang down and you can even swing on them. So that's fun. So I'll make a willow tree too. And I'll make the, the leaves are these long leaves that hang down like this. That's a fun tree. Very interesting looking, fun to draw. 
and I'll make the trunk. So I've got some pine trees and some willow trees. Very cool. And then maybe in the background, I'll draw some bluffs. Kind of up near here, we'll draw them. See how I'm making them go behind the trees? Kind of like that. So we can see some bluffs. So those are kind of like the mountains that we have around here. A bluff is like a small mountain. And I can go in and color some stuff too. Maybe I'll color in my tree trunks. Even the pine trees have some tree trunks. And if you need to pause the video or if you're doing things a little differently or at a different pace, a little slower, that's okay. You don't have to keep right up with me. And you know what? Your picture doesn't have to look just like mine either. You can do it your way. Whatever works for you. I'm using two different greens here to color this tree. It's nice if you have colors, but if you don't have colors, that's okay too. You don't have to worry about it. If you just have pencils or pens, you can make a really nice drawing just with that. Sometimes I, I don't use colors. Sometimes I'd rather just use black and white. And I'm drawing lots of lines for the, the willow tree leaves. And maybe I'll draw kind of some textures. If I just kind of do this, I don't have to draw every single leaf, but if I do a couple of these throughout the tree, it's going to give that texture, give us the idea that it has leaves, right? And then I'll color it green. Nice, nice tree. And maybe the texture that I could put on my pine trees could be a little different. Lots of little lines to show those those pokey pine needles. Do you have a, one of these trees near you? What's really interesting about these kind of trees, these evergreens, is that, you know, in the fall, and I think we talked about this a little bit before too, but in the fall, trees lose their leaves, they fall off, but the pine trees and the evergreens, they keep their needles, they don't need to fall off. So they're evergreen, they're green forever. Right? So I'm drawing lots of these little lines and that gives it a texture. It almost it's almost like a pokey texture. Like if you were to touch it, it looks like it might poke you because they're like a bunch of little needles, right? That's what those trees can be like sometimes. So I added that texture and then I can lightly color it in a little bit too if I want. There's a there's a lot of different ways to do trees, right? You can find your own way to do it. You can do it a way somebody else taught you or you can do it my way. It doesn't matter, it's up to you. All right, we've got a nice little setup for a scene here. We've got some trees, we've got some water. I like it. Okay. Now let's look at what else might be in a forest here in Minnesota. What do you see when you go out into a forest? I'm thinking about some mammals because we have mammals that live in our forests. And a mammal is a ty certain type of animal. We are mammals. You know, there's different types of animals, like a mammal or a bird is a different type. It's different things. And a mammal is one that usually has fur. That's one way you can know it's a mammal. There's a lot of ways you can tell it's a mammal, but here's some examples. I think I'm going to add a nice deer. There are definitely deer that sometimes I'll see a deer in the woods. Have you ever seen a deer in the woods? If you want to pick a different one to do as well, go ahead. So when I draw an animal, I like to think about the shapes, okay? So I'm going to make my deer a little bigger. I like to think about what shapes I see in that animal, okay? so. I'm just going to use this color to draw the outline of the deer. I'm going to draw really lightly. It's got kind of a long body like this, right? And then it's got a neck that comes up and a shape for the head. And then each of the legs is a shape. You see that? You see that shape I'm using for the legs? And it's got a little tail that comes down. What else do you see on the deer? Oh, antlers. Yeah, the antlers come up like this. 
and then we can see other parts coming off of the antlers so beautiful so now that i have the basic shapes of my deer now i can go in with a darker color or you can press harder with your pencil and outline your your animal so like i'm drawing around the head and around the neck and just kind of around the outside of the whole thing so that i can see it really well Maybe now I'll draw the details, like I can draw the deer's nose, I see. I see the deer has some eyes here. Oh, and ears. And then I'll, ooh, I broke my crayon. I do that sometimes when I'm pressing too hard, trying to make it too dark. And there's my deer. Look at that. And I could color the deer. A lot of times they're brown with a little white belly. Give them a white belly. It's like maybe a little white under the neck or around the eyes and mouth. Nice deer. Look at that, it's a deer in my forest. Very cool. Let's try another mammal here. What else do we got? Oh, chipmunks and squirrels. I love them. Let's see. Yeah, I'll do a little, a little squirrel. You see this squirrel right here? That's who I'm gonna draw. If you wanna draw a different one, you can try that too. I'm gonna draw this little squirrel. And where does a squirrel live? A squirrel likes to hang out in the trees. So I'll draw some branches in my tree so I can have animals up in the branches. What a cool idea. The squirrel's body, you know, he's got kind of an oval shaped body and then a long oval shaped tail that hangs down. And maybe I'll draw the squirrel's little head and some pointy ears here. And a little nose. But that's about all there is to it. Maybe I'll make him look kind of fuzzy. Make the tail look fluffy. Color it brown. This squirrel almost has a yellow belly. Like that. And sometimes the squirrels are kind of grayish brown. So I'll color some gray. And I'll color some brown on my squirrel. It's cute. I think it needs some eyes so I can tell that it's a squirrel. So I'll use my little black crayon. Get some little eyes. There's my little squirrel in a tree. It's so cute. Let's do one more mammal. I'll do one more. Hmm. Oh, a skunk. That's fun. I would love to draw a skunk. Okay, so skunks are so funny. They're so cute, but they're so stinky. A stinky animal. So. I see my skunk right here, nice and black and white. It's got a cool shape for the body, kind of big on one end, smaller on the other end, like an oval. And then the head has this little pointy mouth and little ears. I can see his little, his or her little feet coming down. And the big poofy tail on the skunk, that's the best part, big poofy tail, you see that? And then they have these cool white stripes, so you can like color some of it black, but leave the rest white, so you get those nice stripes. Even the tail has some kind of black and white stripes. What a beautiful animal, black and white. That's cool, I like my skunk. All right, so I've got a couple mammals, and I could maybe come back later and draw more mammals if I want to. I'm gonna move on a little bit and look at some birds, okay? So a bird is a totally different type of animal. A bird doesn't have fur. What does a bird have instead of fur? A bird has feathers, that's right. That's one of the ways we can tell it that something is a bird and not a mammal. We have a lot of cool birds in Minnesota. A lot of the birds live around the water. Like this one, a sandbill right here. This is a sandbill crane. I think I'm going to try drawing that one. I'm going to draw it in my water right over here. Cuz it, it's that's one stood out to me cuz it's got a really cool shape. It's tall, right? Its body, you know, we can start with this oval shape for the body, but then it's got this long neck. See that? How fun is that? And then a little round head and a pointy beak. That bird has got some fun shapes. It's got a fun shape for the tail and then long legs that stand in the water. What a fun animal to draw. And it's even got a nice little red bit on the top of its head. That's fun. Look at that. It's got a black beak and a little black eye. 
Maybe I'll color some gray. If I do my black lightly, I get some gray. There we go. And this one has little plants around its feet, so maybe he's standing in the grass outside the water. Look at that. I drew a sandbill crane. That's fun. Let's try another bird. Maybe I'll do one up in my tree here. Look at this one. Kingfisher. A belted kingfisher. That's a pretty bird. I would like to draw that. And you know, like I said before, you can do a different bird if you want to. Alright, I'm going to draw this shape for the body. And then its tail comes down a little bit. It's got a circle shape for the head. And look, it's got spiky feathers on its head. That's the fun part. And another long pointy beak. And little feet hanging onto the branch. And I can draw its wing. Very cool. So there's the eye, and then it's got this nice blue color. And it's got a white belly and a white stripe on its neck. Beautiful, what a cool bird. All right. Now I'll make one more bird for now. Let's take a look at what else we got here. Hmm. I like these ducks. I think it might be fun to do a duck. Let's see if I can find my favorite duck. Yeah, I like this duck. This mallard right here. You see this duck right here? This is a mallard. They've got a nice green head, so that's going to be a fun one to draw. And I'll draw my mallard just floating on the water. Long oval shape for the body. It's got kind of a little wiggly neck that goes up a little bit, and then a circle head, and then a little beak. See? And then we can see some tail feathers too. Now the coloring is when it's really going to come alive. It's got, the, the male ones have this nice green head. The female ones are pretty too. They have all these different brown speckles, all these different lines and patterns. They're so beautiful. Right. And then a little black part on the rear end there. Cute! That's a nice little mallard. I'll see a little trick I learned. Sometimes if you want something to look like it's in the water, you can draw just some little lines going around it like this. Doesn't that look like it's floating in the water now? And then like if I did that around my deer's foot, it looks like his foot is stepping in the water. That's fun. Oh, I just had an idea. I could make my little skunk drinking water. And a little tongue there. And then I'll do the little ripples like I showed you to show that it's in the water. Because animals do all drink water just like we do. This is looking pretty good. I hope you're, you're having fun with yours as much as I am. Now, I didn't want to leave out my favorite animals, the frogs. Because we do have some cool frogs in Minnesota, too. So I wanted to look at some of these frogs and just put maybe a couple. I like that American bullfrog right in the middle. That reminds me of when I was a kid. We used to go catching frogs. And we would catch those American bullfrogs and these mink frogs, but also these leopard frogs. Those are the fast ones that are really hard to catch. So my frog is little and my frog lives by the water. And the frog has kind of a weird shaped body like this, where the head's up here. And then we'll give them some little feet. Just little shapes for the arms and legs. And then a, an eye here and an eye here. And a smiley little mouth. What a cute little frog that is. I'll have to outline it so you can see it a little better. Isn't that interesting how you can make anything you want if you just use the shapes? You just figure out what shapes it's made out of, and then you can draw anything you want. It helps to look at something, too. Give it a little yellow, a little green, and that's my beautiful bullfrog. And we'll draw the little ripples in the water. And you know what? They like to hide a little bit, so I'm going to give it some nice plants over by the side of the water to hide by some grasses 
You know what grows by the water here in Minnesota? There's a really cool plant. It looks like this. It's got a long stalk like this. And then a part on top, a round fluffy part, like it almost looks like a hot dog on a stick. Has anyone seen that plant before? That's called a cattail. Isn't that a funny name for it? I'm trying to find what one looks like right now so that we can really get a look at a real one. That's a cattail. It's got all kinds of fluffy seeds inside of it. And it looks like it has some grass that comes up around it too. I'm glad I looked it up because I got to make the grass taller coming around the cattail. And it looks like they grow in lots of groups. So I'll draw a couple. You just draw a stick, big round part, and a stick on top. Easy. And that's a nice Minnesota plant for you. Very cool. Let's go back to birds. I was wondering if we'd see an owl in here. I don't see an owl. But we can draw an owl anyway. Let's see if we can figure out how to draw an owl. We don't need to look at a picture. An owl, even though owls only come out at night, you can put it in this picture. Maybe my owl will be sleeping. Owl has a tall kind of oval body, pointy ears. We can draw two big wings. Usually they have big eyes, but this one's sleeping. So I'm gonna make this one have closed sleepy eyes and a little triangle beak. Just a sleepy owl. I'll add some nice patterns on the owl because they have beautiful patterns on them. And I'll color it kind of brown. Maybe I'll add some black parts too. That's my beautiful little sleepy owl. I'll put little Z's. Because for some reason we use that to show that something's asleep. Maybe it's like it's snoring. I don't know. Hmm. Okay. Well, let's just take a look at my picture here and see what I can do with it. Because I could say, hey, I'm done. But you know me. I like to say instead, what else can I add? So I think I could add some waves in the water. So just to show, you know, this is like a river and we have water flowing through going this way. You see that? And I could also color in the water even just lightly. You don't have to spend a lot of time just coloring in these spaces, but sometimes I just do a little light coloring over it. Like that. That looks kind of nice, right? I definitely could add some more uh, plants, like grasses and things. Because if you were in a forest in Minnesota, you would see lots of grasses. So first I'll start by drawing lots of grasses. And I'm even being kind of scribbly with it. Because, you know, it's grass. It kind of looks like that. But I'm making sure I'm not scribbling all over the place. I'm kind of going up and down. You see that? And that's how it's going to look like grass. Because grass goes up and down like that. And then I'll even add some more grass out here. Some like little patches of grass around my trees and in the background and then I will just lightly color back here just like I did with the river just fill that in just very lightly I'm kind of using the side of the crayon to cover lots of space and just color lightly coloring in the grass and even up here up the bluffs we can put some green in there because those are covered in trees and you know what I like to add? I would really like to add a nice sunset. I feel like sunsets are so beautiful and it would just be a waste to not have a sunset. Now you can color your sky blue if you want. That's fine. It's your picture. But I'm going to do mine with a nice beautiful sunset. Because when the sun goes up and down it leaves all these awesome colors in the sky. So I'm going up at the top of my mountains and everything from the top of the, the bluffs and the mountains up to the sky, that's gonna be that's gonna be my sky here. So I start with some purple. And then purple goes really nicely into red, like this. And I know it feels weird to be making the sky purple and red, but it's true, it really does turn these these colors. And it's so beautiful. 
And then maybe that'll make it go into some pink. Sometimes we get these nice bright pinks in the sky. So beautiful. And the pink can go into an orange and make these nice peachy colors. Ooh, that's kind of a bright yellow. Maybe I'll try something a little different. Yeah, this is the orange I was thinking of. And then my orange will go into a yellow here. There we go. Look at that beautiful sky. It's so pretty. I can even use my purple to add some extra clouds. Show some clouds in the sky like this. Just, I'm making long, wispy clouds. You can have big, fluffy clouds or however you want to do the clouds. Here we go. Sometimes I use a blue color to outline my trees or my grass. I know that the trees aren't really blue, but instead of, see how I did the deer with black? Instead of using black, sometimes it's fun to try a different color just to outline things and help so that you can see them. You see that? How when I go around my tree in this blue, you can see that tree better. Watch how I do this one too. See, I'm outlining it. It helps us to see it. So that's what I'm doing. I'm outlining my trees and I'm using kind of, making them kind of bumpy so it has like that leafy texture, right? Outlining my beautiful willow tree. Maybe put some shadows in the grass with my blue. See, you can kind of be sneaky with the blue and put it in with your green. Even though the grass isn't blue, it kind of starts to just look like a shadow. And that's fun when you can use other colors like that. Looking good. That's a nice little forest scene. I'm digging it. I'm gonna pull up a little video for us because we have a little extra time, so I think it would be fun to watch a cool video. Okay. Since we're talking about animals and woodland creatures, I thought I would show you this cool painting of somebody's made of a duck. You can keep on drawing. I would say go ahead and keep on drawing if you've got more to do. Otherwise, you can just enjoy this really cool painting. Check this out. They drew it with pencil first, and then it looks like they are painting over the pencil. They draw with pencil first because then you can erase things, you can fix things. It's just a good idea. Some beautiful colors they're using already. What colors do you see in there? It's not just one color, it's at least three. I definitely see some blue. Even though it looks green, look, they hid some blue in there, just like I was doing. You see that? They were using blue to make those shadows. Looks like a nice light yellow for the duck. A nice light, probably mixed some yellow and white together to make that. Ooh, blending in some orange and some browns. So many colors they're using in there. We're almost out of time, so I'll skip forward a little bit. Oh, it's looking so good. Look at how they made it look fluffy. They added these little white lines around the outside to give it a fluffy texture. Kind of like we did with our trees when we added those jagged lines or the leafy lines to give it a leafy texture. See, they added all these little white lines around their duck to make it look fluffy. We did that with our monsters earlier this year. Oh, and look at the water, how they're painting the water. That looks so nice. All right, and we'll see the finished product here. Beautiful duck painting. It's so cute. I love it. 
All right, everybody. Well, I hope you had fun today. I know I sure did. This is a really cool picture. It's going to go really well with my underwater scene. And you know what? It was fun to kind of talk about nature and learn about the world around us and learn about different animals through drawing. That was really cool. So I hope you had fun. And have a good break, everybody. You can keep making art if you want, or if you just need a break, you know, turn everything off for a while, go for it. This is your time. You enjoy it. All right, goodbye, everybody. Take care and be safe. Love you all.